I'm Rob Anderson. Welcome to my Alaskan King. Mm. Hi, it's been a bit. I haven't posted a YouTube video in almost a year, but I just was doing a lot. <laughs> I was trying to get used to the internet, how the internet works, um, but I'm back and I'm glad we got that settled. Okay, the second thing we need to talk about, this bed. So why do I have this bed? Um, I don't have a great answer. <laughs> it was a trauma purchase um, from living in a small studio in New York that was like 400 square feet with my dog during COVID um, and no escape. I came to LA, I got way too big of a place and I have no furniture. So this room was so big. I'm like, why don't I fill it with the biggest bed that I can find? And I've always wanted an Alaskan King bed. I've actually always wanted the floor of a room to be a bed where you, there's lots of pillows and you can watch TV and movies on a big screen with friends. And this was the closest thing to it. So I got it. A few months ago, I started a newsletter called the Heartthrob Collective. I've been compiling recommendations from Instagram stories of what people like to wear, uh, what is everyone listening to, um, what queer artists do you love? and I've been putting them into spreadsheets and emailing them out once a month. In that email is an advice column uh, for sex and dating called On the Alaskan King. Mm. And I was thinking, Rob, these are great questions. You're already answering them. Why aren't you on the bed answering them for YouTube? I hope it's good, I hope you like it, but most importantly, it's easy for me to do. <laughs> Am I qualified to answer these questions? No, I have no professional certifications in anything. Um, I have a bachelor's of arts in theater and media arts. So if you're looking for health advice, I'd ask your doctor. If you wanna submit an anonymous question for this, you can sign up to the Heartthrob Collective, my newsletter. The link is in the description. And once you sign up, you'll get a welcome email. And in there, you'll see where you can submit a question. My partner is not a great kisser. I don't know how to tell him. I was once so angry during sex about it that I bit his lip. He thought I was being kinky. If someone is a bad kisser, like the first time you kiss them, you're like, this person's bad. You have to assume that they're gonna be a bad kisser forever. Something that can change, but it's so innate with your sex appeal and who you are. It just depends on how important kissing is to you. If it's something that's non-negotiable, like they have to be a good kisser or I can't do this, it's probably not worth continuing to see the person and like them in other ways. I enjoy being single, me too. Just turned 64. Everyone's insisting that I couple up. Do I really need to? People are so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> that is such like a heteronormative question, asking people whether they're single or not, or insisting that someone's in a relationship. Um, no, you gotta do what makes you happy, hello. If someone's insisting you do something and you're perfectly fine the way you are, you need to find people to be around that don't ask you those questions. Don't get me wrong, I love a good hookup. But recently, I feel like everyone just wants to hook up, although I'd like a real connection. Is that too much to ask? Uh, no. Friendships are special, really special, and hookups are much easier than a good friendship. I've actually kind of run into this too here in LA where I'm very sex positive and I love sex, but I don't have many friends here, so I'm trying to make them. And I think something that's kind of worked for me is just not hooking up with people that I meet initially in social social situations. It sets some boundaries, but not in a way that's like, I'm too good to hook up with you. Once people stop with the whole like, can we hook up, can we hook up? Like once their minds pass that, you can let your walls down and get to know each other a little bit more. And if they don't drop it, like they're just like, you don't want them as a friend anyway. How annoying, <laughs> it's too much. You don't wanna have a friend around who's just constantly on that zone. Like it's too much, bye. How can I become a bottom? <laughs> Mentally I want it, but physically it's painful. Uh, some of these questions should probably be answered by a doctor or somebody like a GI professional, um, but here's mine. <laughs> this is really common. It is really common and I've experienced it uh, when I first started having sex. I was so jealous of uh, men who could bottom and enjoy it that much. Like how can you enjoy it this much? It doesn't feel like that for me. 
it doesn't feel like that at all. It's so uncomfortable, it's so painful, but I psychologically want that so bad. And uh, I've learned a few things. One is that you cannot trust a top to make you feel good. Some do, but some don't. The only thing they care about is what it feels like for them. That is the only thing that is on their mind. And obviously if you're enjoying it, they are too, but you can't trust them for it to work. <laughs> so you need to make sure that there's a lot of lube on it. Um, and there are different kinds of lube that work better for different people. Uh, water, silicone, uh, a hybrid combination of both, spit, um, existing cum. <laughs> if cum is already in there, it can work as a great lubricant. Um, but you need to make sure that it's lubricated because the top isn't going to care. They will put it in if it's like the Sahara, like they do not care. The second thing is you need to be relaxed. And I know you're probably thinking like, I am relaxed, like I want it so bad, you know? <laughs> you're not, you're not relaxed enough. Um, I think that even just the thought of that it's been painful before and it hasn't been enjoyable yet, as you're about to have sex, is making you tense up without even realizing it. And one trick I've learned is that if you push out while they're pushing in, it kind of helps you relax more. It doesn't always work. If you're too tense, nothing will work, uh, but that does help. Last thing that's made me enjoy bottoming more is understanding the difference between what pain is and what a new feeling is. Uh, because as you experience something in your butt that you haven't before, it can all just feel like pain. But some of it's just a strange feeling that isn't painful. And I think like just kind of understanding and realizing like, okay, what's what here? And just allowing the things that aren't painful, that feel new to happen, uh, it'll get you uh, more in the groove. It can be a lot more comfortable. On that note, I'm gonna wrap up the video. Uh, that was fun. See, it's always fun filming them. And then when I have to get behind a computer and edit it, I'm like, oh. <laughs> <sighs> uh, but I think this one will be easy. We'll see. It's going up regardless, so I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you for joining me on my Alaskan King. Mm.